Super Nintendo games, Nintendo games, all worth hundreds, Game Boy games, N64 games, $50 and up. Man, what has the world come to? What is with these values? I mean, Flintstones surprised at Dino Peak. This game sucks. I'm really sorry. This game is terrible. Why on earth is this game worth $200, $600 even at times? Man, I don't know, man. Screw Rare Games. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? So, uh, yeah, I hope you like my, my my little intro there. Um, don't worry, I don't actually hate Rare Games. It just kind of boggles my mind a bit when I think about, uh, you know, certain things, uh, certain games and stuff. I mean, really, like, what's up with, like, seriously, Flintstone Surprise at Dino Peak, what is up with this game? It, I played it, it really isn't that good. It's not a terrible game, believe me. There have been way worse. Um, you know, it's fun to play, but... I think mainly the only reason it's fun to play is because you know that the game that is in your NES is worth several hundreds of dollars. So yeah, like, tell me what you guys think about rare games. I mean, because I think, I personally, I love collecting rare games, so don't think that, you know, I'm betraying you guys or anything. I mean, believe me, the only reason I have these games is because I've paid money for them, because I traded for them, because I put my time into getting them. So, you know, I and I have a fair share of rare games. You can check out that video. It's pretty popular. You know, I have my fair share of rare games. These are only some of them. But yeah, like I said, I mean, you know, $60 for a Game Boy game, loose. This is Mega Man 5. It's the rarest, or at least most valuable Game Boy game out there. And then you have other games, like, uh, let's say, Zelda or Karina of Time. How much is that worth? Like, $15? $20? And I understand the fact that, like, every teenager and their mom had it when they were, you know, like, 15. or any, It doesn't even matter how old you were. Back when it was released, everybody had that game. So I understand that, but I guess what I'm trying to figure out is... I understand that the reason these games are valuable is because there's a market for them, because, because people want them. But seriously, if a game is not that much fun, why get it? And I know I'm putting everything that I do with game collecting into question, you know, paying for these high prices for my Earthbound or all these games. Um, well, there's games that I play far more often. I mean, sorry, Earthbound is a ton of fun, so Earthbound is worth it. And Bubble Bubble 2 is a lot of fun as well. And so is, you know, Castlevania, Jackie X, Metal Warriors, a lot of them are pretty fun. But games like Flintstones or Action 52, which I'm hoping to be getting soon, um, games like that, I mean, seriously, those are freaking rare games. Um, they really weren't released that much, and they're not that good. Uh, you would think that if you're paying several hundred dollars for a game, it would be good. Kind of like when you're buying like a, a, a luxury like Mercedes-Benz or something. You'd think you'd be getting better than something you could pay for a Toyota, but it really not. It just looks cooler. So I guess it's the same idea. Um, but yeah, like, I don't really want to go into too much depth on this, because this can kind of go on forever, and not really get anywhere at the same time, because really, the only reason, like I said, the only reason things are valuable is because people are willing to pay that prices. Me, being one of those people. Um, and because, because I know that they are so sought after and so hard to find. Um, but I mean, think about it. It's, it's, it's crazy. Like, for example, Mega Man 4 for the Game Boy, which I got in a lot with Mega Man 5, was the double of mine that I then put on eBay. Now, when I, at the time that I put it on eBay, there was one copy up still uh, for $120 along with Mega Man 1, 2, and 3 also on the Game Boy, which really are worth $10, $15 if you're lucky. Really aren't them worth that much. Um, which means that that game would be up for like, what, like $80? I didn't do the exact math, but that's the idea, you know, something really high. Whereas just a week ago, when there were a few copies up, it was selling for $45, and that is the approximate you know, good value for it. So then I put it online for for ninety. I brought it down since then because it hasn't sold. I wouldn't expect anybody to pay ninety dollars for a Game Boy game that a week ago was selling for forty five. But it just goes to show how quickly value can change. And I know eBay really isn't the best place for that because eBay you can price things at whatever you want. It's more if it's sold. And I know it has sold for more than that, but it's also sold for forty five and less than that. So like I said, this, can, this discussion can keep going on forever. What I'd like is if you commented letting me know what you were thinking. Um, because, believe me, I've 
played through uh, Mario Bros. Duck Hunt more times than I've played through Bubble Bubble 2, and I've enjoyed it more than I've played than when I've played Bubble Bubble 2. Same thing for Kid Icarus, a game that Kid Icarus of Myths and Monsters. It's my uh, favorite game, and it's on the Game Boy. Um, I've played through that game a countless amount of times, and I still find it more fun for 10 bucks than any other Game Boy game like Mega Man 5. You know, I'm sorry, it's just, it's an amazing game, and I understand that that's because it's more common and it's not as rare. But at the same time, maybe we should question ourselves as collectors, as people who play games, and ask ourselves, why would I pay $70 for a game that I'm not going to enjoy as much as I would enjoy playing a game that I could pay $15 for. And the answer to that is, of course, I like my collection. I want my collection to grow. I want people to be impressed my, by my collection. I want myself to be impressed by my collection, first and foremost, because I'm the most important person in my universe. Um, but yeah, but that's the point. Um, and I understand why people buy these rare games. I understand why I buy these rare games. But I'm just trying to think about it a bit, and I know I'm not great getting anywhere. But anyways, um... In another month or two, I'll probably be doing an update on my rare, on the, my rare games in my collection. I did one a good month ago, maybe a month and a half, um, and it's, it's gotten great, uh, great viewership, uh, great support. I don't know, uh, great response. That's a better word. Uh, mainly because Games Dirty One shared it. Um, thanks to him. Um, but yeah, I'll probably be doing an, an updated one of those because I have gotten a fair amount of things since then, like the Mega Man I showed you, like the International Soccer Superstars 2000. I always mix up the order. Um, and Action 52 should be coming. A bunch of other games. So thank you guys for watching. Um, I'll see you guys on the next Retro Gamer Vlog. Also, um, before I head out, um, I just figured I'd ask you um, you know, to, to leave your comments. I love comments. Um, I love you guys. If you could, you know, add me on Facebook, we'll talk. I really, if you just want to talk about random, like what you think about gaming, I'm all for that. Um, I love talking to you guys. You guys are so much fun to talk to. Um, so yeah, like we don't have to be discussing a trade or anything. We could just talk about gaming or it doesn't even matter. If you just want to connect with me, add me on Facebook. The link will be in the description. I'm still trying to get that account verified. So for now, it's going to be some link. Or you can just check out Lautner Land. It'll be like my first name will be Lautner, last name Land. Because they won't allow me to just have Lautner Land. Um, so yeah, just search Lautner Land. Two words on Facebook. Or click the link down below to my profile. Add me. I will be happy. I'll accept your request as long as you don't look really creepy. Uh, anyways. Uh, thanks for watching. See you guys.